we are ready to test it. Perfect. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, so between my times at Lombardi and, and Aravis, I've spent about 25 years uh, investing in private companies, uh, mostly biotech. Uh, I've invested in something, I stopped counting at 100, but today probably more than 100 companies financed. Um, I hear the topic is uh, kind of half product, half political. Uh, it, it's a mixture of, uh, of the future, uh, somehow, of, uh, that, that concerns the future of Switzerland and the future of the, the younger generation today, not so much the uh, older generation. Um, we've written an article uh, in the, uh, the False Orge uh, for pension funds, this is the journal that, that pension fund manager read about the double gap saying that uh, in Switzerland we have an issue with, um, uh, with money on one hand uh, and with pension funds that do not invest uh, in, in this asset, uh, asset class of uh, alternative that is venture and private equity. Um, so we'll basically draw a, a few, uh, introduce a few facts uh, that, that we have put together. We'll go into the Motion Grabo, which is the uh, political part, and explain one year later where, where are we on this. Um, and also who are the people that are moving around this um, and uh, basically conclude to uh, what uh, we, uh, we think should uh, be in the direction in which all this is going to go. Don't hesitate to stop me during the, the usually the, the burning question during the presentation are good questions, so I, I like if people interrupt me and, and just uh, sh shoot questions. Um, so wh what do we mean by double gap? It was a, a relatively, um, um, afterwards everything is simple, but a co simple comparisons with country that we believe are reasonably close uh, to Switzerland in terms of quality of innovation, in terms of size, um, uh, BIP, and in terms of population. Uh, we've taken Israel and Sweden and looked at uh, this country and tried to figure out how does Switzerland bench benchmark itself towards close European or European-like peers. Um, the conclusion is, uh, and, and the numbers are uh, the numbers of, um, sorry, the numbers of last year. Uh, so 600 million invested uh, in venture last year in Switzerland, two and a half billion in Israel, and one and a half billion uh, in Sweden. For again, very similar countries. So two and a half times more in Sweden, uh, which is number two in innovation rankings, and uh, four and a half times more in Israel. Uh, which is uh, further down on the in, uh, on, in the rankings. In terms of performance, it's very difficult to compare country global performance at this stage in, in Europe. It is still a, a, a reasonably immature sector. So I think country comparisons uh, are, are a little bit difficult. But still, uh, what, what, you, um, what you see is that uh, if you count the unicorns, which is ca companies that from scratch in 2003 became a billion uh, in value today, uh, you, you see that there are five unicorns counted. I'm sorry, I'm always pushing on the wrong button here. Five unicorns in Israel, five in Sweden, and zero to my count. Uh, some people in Lausanne say that there is one company with, that has a, a billion in valuation. Um, maybe on paper, I'm not really sure in reality. So I, I, I didn't count it, but we may have one in Switzerland to be uh, correct. So what does it mean? It means that if you look at the average deal, uh, which is the average transaction, so the number of transactions per year, this is something that is in, in this country is public. Uh, the amount uh, estimated, which is the amount that I've showed, you see that in Switzerland, compared again to Israel, and in particular to Sweden, Sweden invests much more per company and really focuses their investment very much, uh, more than Israel and more than double than uh, in Switzerland. So on average, I would say it's at least double as hard to get your late stage money uh, than in Sweden, which you could question why is this the case. And if you compare Swe Sweden and Switzerland, uh, you will see that both have pension fund systems and that the pension fund system in Sweden actually invests quite uh, significantly in private equity and venture capital. So that is a major uh, difference. So I think it's really important to uh, one, educate, because I think many pension funds, I mean the top 50 pension funds are mostly uh, quite well educated about alternative assets. Um, everything else is uh, less, uh, or let's say is, is 
basically has a limited knowledge of, of what venture capital and private equity is. But I, I, in many meetings that I've done, many people are strongly interested to, uh, to learn more. Um, and that's what we're trying to, uh, to work on. So that's the, the famous chart from the, the innovation ranking. Switzerland is a small point <coughs> on the top there. It really looks great. Since 1995, number one, everybody's happy. Uh, yeah, uh, fantastic, give more money to ETH and universities. Um, but when the question that we're, we're raising is really what about commercialization of all this innovation that is produced? Uh, when you see that University of Zurich has done last year 1,000 clinical trials, and that out of the 1,000 clinical trials, not a single product came out of it, um, you, you can start questioning you know, where there's somewhere that there is a problem. Um, so and what, what do you mean by clinical trials? Testing uh, drugs, devices, uh, diagnostics on patients. Part of uh, uh, publications. Usually the next step is to make things commercial, in particular if they work. And, and none, of, none of that happened last year, which I think is worrisome. Um, <coughs> so it's a lot of good money thrown at stuff that is... Uh, probably interesting academically, uh, which is fine. I think that's part of university research. But that so little comes out compared to the country that we took as reference point is, is what is uh, worrying. And is what where uh, I, I think we have to do, to do something. Uh, if you look at the um, something maybe less, uh, more soft <laughs> in its approach, which is the uh, the top 20 uh, list of uh, places to, uh, to do startups, you see that neither Zurich nor Lausanne is present. And uh, when you see that uh, Berlin, uh, which is a very new uh, area for startups, uh, is already on the positions 15, um, you know, that, that's I, I think Zurich and Lausanne should, should be there, or at least Switzerland as a cluster, how you want to put it, I think. Uh, this is really a, a shame not to be there and, and signal. So what, what do we need to change? I think uh, we, we need to work on building stronger bridges. There are some bridges, but they're sectorially very focused on biotech and medtech. 80% um, of the venture money in Switzerland is coming from uh, funds that uh, are sector specialized in medtech and biotech, uh, which means that only 20% of the money comes from other funds that are usually generalist. Um, and uh, I think these bridges have to be built, not just by, uh, by money, but more money would help bring more uh, competence, more, more uh, people investing, and with the, the, the people on the academic side. I think that the fundaments are reasonably solid. The industry is already 15 years old. The first VC funds have been created, I would say, in the lead, some in the 70s for the very first ones, uh, but the more recent ones have been created late 90s. Uh, at, at the bubble, the one that are still here today, uh, made a reasonable job to survive so long. Uh, so, um, so I think these these foundations are quite quite good. Um, but for new younger people to create a new fund today in Switzerland in a new sector is close to impossible. Uh, so promoting new funds, new sectors. Uh, if you look at the country of Nestle and Swatch and, and Rolex and so on, we do not have a consumer goods fund in Switzerland. Uh, we do not have an IT fund. We are one of the most creative gaming, uh, in, it's very small, but very creative in gaming industry in Switzerland. Nobody invests in these guys. Could you speak up a bit? Yes, sure. Um, so um, I think promoting uh, new sectors uh, to build a diversified allocation is, is very important uh, for venture. Do you hear me a little bit better like that? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Otherwise, I'll come a little bit closer. Oops. Sorry. Um, and I think there is a new generation coming of entrepreneurs, being it on startup companies, being it uh, in the venture capital area. Guys like me uh, are thinking of their way out. I think clearly we see a new generation of people. We see them in London, we see them in Berlin, we see them in Paris, we see them in Silicon Valley, and I really would like to see them empowered uh, here in Switzerland. So statistics on where is the money going in Switzerland, and, and can can we frame um, can we frame a little bit? Sorry for that. 
can we frame a little bit the um, the efforts that that we want to do and explain uh, where it is uh, most needed um, it is clearly not so much needed in the early stages uh, we see that there are a number uh, of, of start financing in the early stages the first million in Switzerland is fairly easy if you have something interesting to, to get in either in the form of equity from uh, friends, family and fools, so-called love money, uh, or from um, all kind of angel clubs uh, that, that you find in, in the larger cities in Switzerland, or from uh, business plan competitions um, and uh, foundations that give quite a lot of uh, non-equity money to, uh, to companies. So from one up to two million to, to, be, uh, to be broad uh, is, uh, is easy. Um, once you've created the company, you, you've basically transferred the technology and you probably finance your first year of life as a company with the, your first million, you need to raise so-called development money. You need to bring your, your academic ID in the form of a product and then this product to clients and to a market or create the market if it's uh, inexistent. And this takes a lot of money. This is a very capital intensive phase. Irrespective of the sectors in which you are, if you start to develop a product globally, you're going to have to raise between 20 to uh, 30 million. Less than that, it's difficult to get global. If you're in an industry which is in particularly capital intensive, like biotech or medtech, uh, you will have to raise probably more than 100 million in equity uh, to get to the finish line. So very capital intensive. And this is the so-called valley of death that you see a little bit everywhere. Uh, but it, it is in Switzerland, if you're a person that is responsible for, for financing deals in this area, I would say uh, 5 to 20 million, I can assure you this is extremely difficult to find. And you most of the time have to go abroad, take German money. If you read NZZ again, you will see uh, every day almost, or every week at least, you see a high-tech Grindelfond is coming in Switzerland and giving loans to Swiss companies. We don't have anything like that for, for Swiss companies. Um, so the situation on the early stage is fine, and that's what you mostly read in, in press release and in startup um, discussions. If you look at the development part, um, I think the situation uh, is much more complicated and uh, much more difficult for people to keep their companies afloat. Who are the active managers? Uh, just to, to put a kind of a a map to say who are the people that are most active in Switzerland. You will see that most of these people are, are biotech. Yes? Actually, sorry, can I ask a, a question for the, the previous slide? I mean, you, you say that there's a strong map and no capital. So I, my naive impression would be that, it, I mean, it's about co cause and, and symptom. Um, but I mean, obviously, there's you say there's little capital. But uh, do you have anecdotal evidence that there's a lot of demand for capital in companies that are unable to get funds? Maybe you get to that later in the presentation. I, I do not get to that in, in details. Um, very often you get to single companies, uh, but, but it's difficult to take averages. Venture is, is obviously a very broad area, uh, but uh, you, you take some companies like uh, Get Your Guide recently. Uh, again, I read in an article, I don't remember where, uh, that uh, for them financing was never a problem. Uh, so, so there are companies that are on that end. I can tell you that in the, the capital intensive area of biotech and medtech, uh, it is extremely difficult to, uh, to syndicate significant round of, of financing. And I think if you're in companies that are in sectors um, where you have a small market in Switzerland uh, and you want to uh, internationalize, it's very difficult to get this, this, the amount of money, 10 to 20 million, that will get you outside of Switzerland. And, um, and I think if I compare to, uh, to companies that I look in, in Germany or in England uh, or even in, in France, I think they have much less problem uh, to get financed and they have much more money per company. On average, from what I see, I don't see everything. Uh, but, but it is definitely less difficult to, uh, to syndicate in these, uh, in these countries. I can just back you up with an anecdote I was involved with. got to that point and there was just seemed to be no vehicle to there was no fun there was there was nobody that we could go to to get that extra that was a promising technology I think now it's always a and I've 
I have some of these companies in my portfolio as well where we haven't managed to, uh, to find investors. Uh, and, and usually if you find investors uh, in the US, late stage investors are, are mostly in the US, and they say, okay, uh, we'll give you money, but you have to open, the start is telling you you have to open a subsidiary in California or in Boston, and two years later the company and, and, uh, is, is away. And I have a number of, of examples like that. Um, so, so, so the effect on the economy uh, is, is real. I mean, it's, uh, obviously we could do statistics. We are a small group, we are uh, an association, uh, and, and we are not um, you know, uh, rich enough to, to have a, a staff of analysts that, that uh, put all this information together. But some, some data is there. We, we could probably uh, give it some, some, uh, some meat. Vintage or the, the age of the company, because I can imagine that for a lot of these academic um, researchers, there's actually a lot of lead time where you have maybe some small grants and research research support, but then the actual fundraising comes. I don't know if the company is already 15 years old or 10 years old, and maybe it, that also is a detrimental aspect for an investor to look at. So the, 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 there was there, there has been a research published. Uh, I think there was a PhD thesis on on that topic. Um, and and I can't cite by memory wh where it was, but uh, for startups, there is very little vintage year effect. Uh, for venture funds, there is a very strong vintage year effect. And the main difference is that uh, startups are less immediately uh, dependent on, on uh, stock market cycle, whereas venture funds, in particular US venture funds, use the public markets a lot to float their companies. So if the market is closed, you can't exit, and then you have worse returns. And uh, if, you, uh, if you can exit uh, on public market, like in the last 10 years, excluding 2016, uh, you, could, uh, you could exit a lot of your companies on public market, and then your performance is definitely significantly much better. And, and that is probably one of the other issues that we have in uh, in Switzerland is that today if you're a company less than 500 million in size trying to go public, no, no, ba no bank will take you or with very, very big difficulties. And if you're trying to raise less than 100 million, same thing, it's too small for banks, they're not going to do, to do it. And, and I think there we also probably have to work on a solution for um, creating liquidity for smaller companies, maybe to a broader public when they're somewhat de-risked. Uh, but uh, still have access to public market for the more capital in intensive part of their uh, development. Um, so w basically what, what we see here, um, wh when you look at these names, as I said, 80% uh, is, uh, my batteries are going out, um, are str very strong biotech focus, about approximately 80% uh, of the money. So if you're not a biotech guy, and you're going to ask for money to us, I'm going to tell you, sorry, I, I can't help you. I, I have money for biotech specifically, and I'm not allowed to invest outside. The average size of a fund is, is another issue. Is in Switzerland, for the top 10, I looked, because if you, <laughs> if you go broader than 10, uh, you, you, you go to numbers that are so small that it's, w it's really frightening. So the top 10 people in Switzerland have 60 million, on average. Uh, that's a very small number. Uh, with, uh, with 60 million, if, you're, uh, if you need to finance round of 20 million, you're not in good shape. Uh, and you certainly cannot compete um, outside of Switzerland. The average fund in, uh, in Europe is about 150 million. In the US, we're today about two to 300 million for an average venture fund. Uh, so it's significantly larger than what we see in Switzerland. And the big client class that is missing it's not banks, it's not insurance, it's not um, uh, family offices, it's pension funds. You have some individual pension funds that do a little bit, you know, small investments to learn mostly, uh, but, but that's very limited. Um, the number of active managers is shrinking because it's impossible for people to raise new funds. So if you're a new team, new fund in a new sector, Basically, any institutional investor will turn his back and say, go away. I'm, I'm not even going to talk to you. Uh, so, so this means that the, uh, the, the managers that are here are the people that started companies in, uh, in the uh, late 90s and are still here. 
and we are aging, uh, and, and it's difficult. I mean, organizing succession is not an easy thing. And we are organizing succession in our own sectors. We're not orga organizing succession in new sectors, which we, we have no expertise and no track record into. So I think that, that's one big thing to break. Um, what one needs to really remember is that venture is a local business. Um, without this local knowledge, in particular of the deal flow, you're close to company, you speak the same language. Um, the seed arena, as I said, is very well organized. You meet people at the venture.ch, at the ETH on the business plan competition. You go to the venture kick jury, you go to CTI Invest, CEO Day in Bern, and you meet 80% of the startups. Uh, there is a good transparency, there is really a good match, and the local people add uh, quite some value with, uh, with that. Um, the, the local legal uh, knowledge is important. If you want to attract French, German, English, uh, Scandinavian investors, or even US investors, you need to understand and be able to explain them what's going on on the legal framework. Why is it so complicated in Switzerland to do options compared to the US? Uh, why uh, do we need to have a nominal value in our capital? Uh, and, you know, there are lots of, of, of questions that, that you need to be aware and have to be able to explain. The foreign VC generally, uh, with the exception of uh, probably Sofinova and Versant, are the only two ones that actually uh, seed companies or do very early stage. Most others, they come when the company is founded at the later stages and they're brought in by a Swiss uh, local investor. So again, the, the role of the Swiss local people um, are, are important. By the way, it does not necessarily need to be a, a VC, it can also be an angel that has contact with other uh, network, but it's really access to capital markets that these companies need at the end of the day. Performance, uh, I will not show specific performance in Switzerland because the data is of too poor quality. Uh, there, there are very few data points. There is some numbers, if some of you are interested, I, I can share that. But I think it's more relevant to look at the, uh, the average of Europe. Switzerland behaves in terms of performance very similarly to the rest of the Europe. And what we see um, is, is that um, compared to 15 years ago and, and the, the last three years obviously have been very positive years uh, for, for exits in private equity and venture. Uh, you see that year, but all, to answer to your question on vintage, the performance in Europe has been uh, quite improved and the performance in the US, on the US VC line, we see that it's been kind of stable. Uh, to what should you benchmark? Uh, venture performance. Uh, I believe that uh, the, the small small cap index in Switzerland is probably, you know, a reasonable benchmark. Whether it's the best, I'm not sure. You see that it uh, its performance on three years is uh, is not great. So its composition is different from from uh, from venture uh, that are investing in in biotech. Obviously, is very uh, Europe wide also uh, prone for biotech. And, and IT, uh, the uh, small cap in Switzerland is much more industrial and financial than, uh, than biotech and IT. So it's not perfect, but I, I think that's probably, a, as a pension fund, probably a reasonable basis of comparison. Um, in terms of return for Switzerland, rather than giving global numbers, I'll, I'll go uh, and say we also have uh, companies that have uh, generated returns, you know, the famous 10x. A typical VC, US VC that comes, Silicon Valley guy, always talks about 10x. I'm going to deliver you 10x return on your money. Uh, that's the big thing that everybody's trying to achieve. We also have that in Switzerland. Some companies have delivered 10x to their investors. And it's usually early stage, development stage investors. And the name of these companies are on the lower chart. Then in terms of creation of value, you, know, you can measure the number of employees, all that stuff. That I, I think that's always <coughs> difficult. I think what is for the country is important is the creation of value, and you see that we have companies that more or less from all from scratch, uh, not all with, with pure venture money, uh, have created uh, company values over 500 million, and a uh, higher number uh, company values over 200 million, which from scratch I think is is, is quite good, uh, and for the limited amount of money and the limited amount of people uh, doing that is also quite uh, quite interesting. So there is ways to make return in Switzerland. I think it's a question of intensity 
on how people work on, on, on and help these companies to move forward. Um, sorry. So the political part. Um, two years ago, in, in or <coughs> already yes, two years ago, 2014, um, the uh, Senator uh, Grabo uh, put a motion in uh, in the Council of States. Uh, to create a fund for the future uh, that wants to be a pooling vehicle um, for small uh, and private uh, startup and, pr and small companies um, financed by an allocation from pension funds. That's it. No obligation. Uh, it's, it's just a very vague, very broad question set to the, uh, to the government. Um, Henry Meyer, uh, who is also from Luzern, uh, the former uh, CFO of Roche, um, He's, he's really the guy that's behind the motion. Uh, he's, uh, he's been very vocal in the press uh, about this, uh, that we have to convince pension fund to invest. And he went further to say that pension funds should invest 1% of their net cash flows per year. Um, the issue that I have with that is that in 2015, 1% of their net cash flow is about 5 billion. If you ask me how in the world am I going to invest 5 billion in Switzerland in startups, I have no clue how this is possible, even if you include buyouts. Uh, the market for buyout is already very well covered. It's a very competitive market. And um, I, I think that that, that that would be a, a huge number. I think you, are, you, you have to come with a much more flexible approach, smaller funds, and one fund after the other, and really go along, educate, explain what you do, and, uh, and, and be transparent. So the motion has been approved surprisingly quickly for Switzerland by uh, the Council of States, uh, where it was uh, started, recommended for approval by the federal government, and approved by the National Council in 2014. This is very fast. And uh, all of the, uh, I would call, special interest initiatives that you see in the politic, um, I think this is one of the fastest that got through. Uh, so the, uh, the government has uh, created a working group, as, as usual, Arbeitsgruppe, uh, which is uh, responsible to elaborate a fund proposition. So you can imagine the government in charge of elaborating a fund. That's something that's probably going to take quite some time. Um, but people are working, uh, and the working group had a number of interviews uh, and meetings. Uh, there, last summer there was a meeting between the, uh, the pension funds and the venture community. And uh, you could figure out that the venture community is a very heteroclite uh, something, where you have people from all kinds of areas, everybody wanting something different. So the industry was talking uh, in a very noisy fashion, I would say. And uh, the venture fund just killed the idea of forcing pension funds to invest in anything close to what has been described. So that, that's how it left in summer. Discussions are going on. Uh, today, um, we heard uh, that Henry Meyer is uh, mandating a firm in London. I'm a little bit surprised to hear to and see London-based people that would manage such a fund for Switzerland. But uh, it seems that there, they are moving also as well with a commercial product. Um, I don't know any details. I haven't met Henry Meyer for a while, so I, I do not know more. Uh, Vinci Capital in Lausanne is quite vocal about uh, their platform as being a possible solution. Swiss Fund uh, that I lead, and I will say a few words, what we are proposing, uh, we believe that we have to come with a commercial uh, and, uh, and a product, structured as a product. Uh, as the, the USVC always say, dog eat dog food, and pension fund eat products. Uh, so, so you need to bring them a product. An ID is not a product. So it's really important. And then Digital Zurich announced the creation of an accelerator. Um, I'm not part of, of Digital Zurich, but um, I'm not really sure that another accelerator makes a lot of sense in the environment that I described in the financing. Uh, it's probably another building, another few consultants uh, well paid for. Um, uh, coaching companies, I'm not sure this is super highly needed. So trying to tra transform that in something bigger and more productive is, uh, would be probably interesting. To date, none of the Swiss big fun, fund of fund players, uh, LGT, Partners Group, ADVEC, uh, to name them, have, uh, have not uh, moved 
uh, they've been interviewed, but they have not made any movement with a proposition or uh, with, um, with an activity, I would say, in, within this, uh, this group. Being able to bring one of these guys in the game, I think, would be longer term very important and is one of my targets. So, so far, nobody, including Swiss Fund, could make, uh, match the tag of pension funds that gave a very clear message. They want a cheap product. Uh, fund of fund typically have a, a total expense <coughs> ratio of about 600 basis points, 6% per year. So that <coughs> basically eats all the performance. Um, so they want something that's cheaper. Um, and it needs to be professionally uh, structured and managed so that it fits the needs of uh, governance, in particular of, um, of pension funds, that are quite rigid, as everybody knows. Um, so this, the, the case study, if you want, of, uh, in, in two slides of, uh, of the Swiss funds, um, we, um, we went and interviewed quite a number of pension funds to start with and uh, basically w looked at what was on the market. Uh, so it's basically fund of funds, as I said, co-investment funds. Uh, fund of funds is the older version. Uh, the main issue are, are the high fees. Uh, today, a uh, pension fund manager cannot show in his books a fund with 600 basis points cost, total cost ratio. This is just out of uh, proportion. He's going to get killed uh, by, uh, by its uh, Stiftungsrat if you bring something like that. Um, the co-investment fund is basically managed by similar people that have used their fund of fund expertise to go and do co-investments, mostly in private equity. This is not so common in um, in venture, uh, but I've used their um, their expertise to uh, to provide co-investment fund. So co-invest fund, you don't have the multiplication of fees between the fund of fund and the manager uh, below uh, that is invested. Uh, so it's cheaper. The issue that many investors have uh, complained about uh, co-investment fund is that they they bring some al alternative um, adverse selection in the sense that. A lot of the deals that come to co-investments are the B deals. It's not really the top, very hot, best performing A deals. So what we're proposing is something um, which is uh, a mix of the two, which is a close relationship with a highly professional sector specialist, which thanks to my activities in SEC, I, I have the privilege to, uh, to enjoy. Um, <coughs> internal investment decision process on a deal-by-deal -deal basis. Clearly, the people that are managing this fund must be the decision makers. They carry the responsibility, and they also carry the responsibility of losses. <coughs> so towards the pension fund, clearly, it's not an outside guy that I don't know that is managing the money. Uh, the, the, the money manager is known, and we know where he lives, which is something that once the pension fund manager told me, I know where you live. <laughs> so, so I think that, that that's an argument that people uh, like. The direct investment uh, in companies is uh, probably the preferred way by, um, by companies. Um, they can directly interact with the people that are giving them money, and they probably will feel also more responsible for the money that they're getting if they know it comes directly from pension funds. Uh, the total expense ratio that we can manage, it's, and there is a, s a certain good citizen approach into this product, is, uh, is about I think I have 2.2 uh, total expense ratio, including some performance fees. Uh, so, so that's very cheap. That's cheaper than a, a, a direct venture fund. Um, and it's obviously a large flexibility to, to pick investments and they accelerate certain, diminish so others. You're, you're uh, in a much better position than in the fund of fund. So that's kind of a summary. The target is would be to raise probably 300. Uh, a million would be a good number. Uh, that would make uh, 500 would be uh, would be perfect and probably the maximum. I would take the responsibility to invest in Switzerland. I think we can invest 100 million per year on top of what's the 600 that are actually visible in Switzerland. Much more, I think, is uh, is difficult, and you would have to make compromise on on quality. Um, in terms of uh, diversification, it's it's basically a photographic picture of. Uh, the sectors that we see in terms of number of deals today, um, it's still quite dominated by uh, biotech and medtech, uh, but in terms of number of deals, you open the door to new sectors that are uh, today the poor uh, in terms of financing. Uh, in terms of stages, I think you have to be somewhat prudent. So early stage would be, uh, the suggestion would be a third of the investment. Uh, mid and, and mid stage about 
a third. And there are lots of special situations in Switzerland, uh, in particular in secondary, so portfolios that are just sitting there and, and doing nothing. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a mixture of various instruments uh, to, uh, to redenominize re re the, uh, some companies that are maybe sitting in portfolios and, and not active anymore. So we presented that uh, to 31 uh, pension funds. Our target was the top 50 uh, pension funds in Switzerland. <coughs> and we got some, uh, some feedback that I kind of s schematically uh, summarized here. Half of them told us no, uh, <laughs> straight. About 30% uh, told us come back later because they're still working on their location in alternatives. Not really sure how much, where uh, to put venture or private equity. And 23%, and I think that's quite a high number, uh, in the top 50, these are the largest, the smallest uh, guys that we interviewed have 5 billion under management. Uh, so 23% said, interesting, but I don't want to be the lead investor. <laughs> uh, which is a which is, uh, similar thing that companies here. Um, so we are at the stage where uh, clearly, I think it was right to, to focus the top 50. You're not going to go to the, the smaller guys that have less expertise with alternative assets. Um, the, uh, the private pension funds are the large part of that 23% number. Um, nobody wants to take the lead, typical Swiss uh, situation. So that's why I'm targeting the fund of fund guys and trying to bring them in. Uh, in the feedback that we got from, yes? Did anyone say yes? Yes, I have some yeses. Okay. But the, the, the problem is, you know, how do you want to position this? Maybe yes is for me when I have a signature on a subscription sheet. Um, so we are in a situation when people said maybe, but the fund needs to reach 200 million. Uh, I don't want more than 20%. Uh, I want a say in some form on the deal flow and, and da 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 da. So we're still not there. Soft commitment, if I could say like that for whatever this means, we're between 90 and 150 million. If I accumulate the ranges that I've heard in, in these meetings. So I think it's, you know, we're not that far. We're not that far. Um, so I think it's worth continuing to hope and, and work hard. Um, and, and I think the, the feedback we receive is, is too Swiss. Actually, what we'd like from the pension fund was we'd like something that is a one-stop solution for private equity and venture, let's say Europe-wide or even worldwide. And you can overweight the, the Swiss part in it, that would be fine for us, but let, just do it broader. That, that would help us more uh, to, build, uh, to build this. And that's for me the, the, the platform that I'm using and the feedback that I'm using to talk to the UBS and partners group of the world. Um, a branded manager, as I said, uh, pension funds are risk averse. If you come with a fund from UBS or from BlackRock, it's easier to place uh, than if it comes from Araris or Jean-Philippe Trippe, even worse. Um, so, uh, so they are clearly uh, finding a, a partner is important. Uh, I think the target size uh, that I mentioned, 300 to 500 million is too small. Uh, if you're a, a, a pension fund that is managing, you know, a double digit number of billions, uh, you, you don't want to have a line of 20 million. I think that, that's too small. You want to have lines be between 50 and 100 million. And, and therefore, uh, a larger solution would bring probably a fund between one and two billion in which you could say, okay, uh, probably 20%, uh, 30%, depending on the size, would go to the Swiss sub part. I think that's something that seems to have a, a reasonable consensus. So I've put that, that small sign up here because they are, we, are, we are still in an area where lots of people are blind walking around and you hear lots of interviews of people that are mentioning things that last weekend that it was, there is too much money in Switzerland for venture. I think you need to look really at, at the segments of the market and that's true for the earlier stage part. I think that's <coughs> far wrong for the later stage part. And again, from sectors, I think biotech is, is doing OK. The other sectors are in old stages having a much more difficult life. Um, so what have we learned? I think the Swiss angle versus international exposure, actually, you, don't, you, you can't do a fund for Switzerland only. I think that would be uh, not accepted by the market. Um, people want a one-stop shop alternative. 
and diversification and performance is important. You're working for the retirees, you're not working for management fees or performance fee for the manager. I think that's very important to, uh, to keep in mind. The other one where uh, we're still a little bit blind and there are some people still confusing a little bit the picture, um, private initiative versus public initiative. Uh, I'm strongly in favor of uh, a private initiative. I think this is not something for public money. In particular, if you feel important that the manager uh, has full responsibility for the performance. Um, so taxpayer, a sovereign fund, having talked to numerous politicians, I think this is not in the picture. Um, and, and there's clearly no political majority for that on the top that I'm personally not convinced of a public uh, solution. So what is the role of politicians in all that? Um, I think politicians from right to left uh, know that um, startup is a great uh, topic for the media. Uh, if, you, if you read that uh, the number of uh, the coverage uh, for, for startups, it's, it's one of the most covered uh, areas in in, uh, in the press, uh, very uh, very liked by uh, by the public. Um, so they understand that uh, something has to be done. It probably should not be done by changing laws. I think there are very few laws I believe that are urgently needed to change. Um, maybe we can help a little bit the pension funds uh, with BFAF outside or certain areas, but, but uh, in general I think the tax laws in Zurich is a different discussion, but I think at the Bundes level there is very limited to, uh, to be changed. So the politicians should help, and probably with the big pockets like uh, Nationalbank uh, or uh, AFAU that are still quite political for the AFAU, less political for the Nationalbank, uh, they could also be uh, part of, of that. Uh, just I have a question to the politicians. I also do not think that they should construct a fund or fund for pension funds. But uh, did you look uh, on other countries like Israel and the US, who is very strong in this field, what the states do behind it? Uh, as I heard, the US, for instance, has a, I think a small business act, which really supports uh, new uh, foundations of big firms, and also Israel, I think, also. Mostly for military reasons, they, they support young uh, venture capital firms. Is it not that uh, Switzerland should also do something in this field? I, I think our military are the corporates. In Switzerland, we are lucky to have, as I said, the Swatch, the Nestle, the Novartis, the UBS for FinTech, Credit Suisse. Uh, and, and these large firms, I think, should, could do much more doing early deals. Uh, investing, not taking over, investing and, and, and helping uh, channel some of the products of these companies at the global level. I, I, that's what I would wish, rather than, um, uh, you know, the Swiss military, I think, uh, doesn't have really a history in terms of pharmaceutical research, in terms of, if you see how much the US are spending on antiviral, anti antibiotic research, it's, it's humongous amounts. And some of the Swiss companies that have invested, Evolva, is, is an example of one that got, I don't remember the exact amount, 25 million uh, from, uh, from the US military. I think that that's not, I can't really figure that out in the, uh, most of the industries that we're talking about. A small business act, I think would, would probably solve a limited number of issues because the issues that the small companies have are very often cantonal at the local level. Uh, and it has, a lot of them has to do uh, with red tape, too much administration in some areas, um, getting permits, depending on the cantons in which you are, for foreign qualified workers is complicated, um, and tax here is, is a nightmare. Yes, of course it should be broad and not uh, only military focus. But uh, also we have in Switzerland uh, an agency, the, the CARTI, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I, I, I'm not sure what, I know what about what, what she does, but uh, this, uh, this agency should be, have some effect on this field. But, uh, they, 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 do, they do have an effect. I think that the role of CATI is really to, to, to spend some money 
to facilitate tech transfer. Uh, so, so it's really things that are not belonging to acad purely academic research, but still can be performed by academics uh, and financed by an outside, but couldn't be financed by the Fonds National, for example. So, so I think they have a very, uh, a very precise role, which, in my opinion, is closer to to academic research than than probably I, as investor, would like. I mean, I'm interested in product, n not so much in prototype and academic research. We use a lot of CATE um, money or or some other stuff that is uh, European uh, grants. But you know, it's it's really to 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 help early stage uh, product that are still at the academic level. As soon as it gets developmental, the CATE doesn't have a role anymore. Um, so I think that's where I'm pushing for. I think you, you got the message through my talk. I'm going, not going to uh, re repeat myself. Um, Swiss angle with international exposure, private, commercially relevant product. Um, and after diversification and performance. I think if you bring these three elements together, uh, you're going to have something which is probably pretty close to what uh, is acceptable for pension funds and eventually a broader set of, uh, of investors. I've had uh, discussions with foundations, for example, uh, that, are, that are, uh, are expressed an interest. They are not in my statistics. So in the meantime, what you do, you do, I think believe in yourself, start your own company, money, uh, is the situation is going to improve and uh, in particular a lot of the CFAs are in the, uh, the asset management area uh, so I encourage you to think about ways to uh, make yourself independent and start your own company. Thank you. <laughs>